hey guys, what's happening? So, got this uh, three phase Baldor motor on offer up. It's actually a little more money I want to spend. It was a hundred bucks. It's a one and a half horsepower. Um, it's going to replace my uh, single phase motor on this miller here. And uh, the issue is with the mill is that um, I want to be able to control the RPM. So I do actually have a VFD for this thing, but um, this video is going to be about uh, rebuilding this thing. So I already took the cover off and sanded it, but um, anytime you're, you buy a used motor, you should look at the bearings. Um, you know, most motors are designed to, you know, these more like industrial motors are designed to be able to replace the bearings. And you know that, pull this motor out. Actually, it was in really good shape. Um, you know, it was it was it was actually like like a like a wood shop or like a, a cabinet shop. So it was full of like uh, dust. And the current bearings that are on here, the metal steel bearings, um, these bearings right here, are actually better for high speed operation. But like the black seals with the uh, um, you know like the rubber rubber coating. Are actually better. They, they actually seal better, you know, than the actual metal face. What, what I'm talking about here is this little face right here. So sometimes you see bearings with the metal face, and some of the plastic. So this is actually a high-speed motor. It uh, runs at uh, I think it was like 34, 50, and that's actually what I wanted. I wanted a higher-speed motor. Um, so that's actually what I'm going to replace it with the same metal bearings. Um, the bearings that came on it. Um, well, you know it's a it's designed to be replaced, you know, and serviced because it actually has the bearing part number. There's 6203 for this motor, but there's stamped somewhere around right here a bearing here, 6203 front and back. So you know it's designed to be serviced if they actually have the bearing part number right on the actual tag. Um, Baldor is actually like this was made in America, so I mean they're sort of premium motors. I actually do kind of like the cast iron motors better, but. Um, just because they can actually, uh, they absorb heat better, you know. But, uh, so I'm going from a half horsepower on that thing, which came with the device, and going to one and a half horsepower. But what I noticed is that when I took it apart a couple days ago, um, that this front bearing, get the front plate off here, is that this front bearing was pretty noisy. Hear that? I mean, it's not bad, but I just think that's going to create a lot of noise. So now that I actually have it open, um, I mean, it only cost me $13 from Timken bearings. Um, so I might as well do that now and have to take it up completely apart later. Um, like, the back one feels fine. It feels like there's grease still in there. Whereas the front one, I mean, in theory, you could probably repack this, but I mean, it's a little bit of play in there. Eh, about the same. So it's, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but it's, I mean, might as well just get new bearings for 13 bucks. And overnight shipping, too, uh, on Amazon, so... All right, so uh, I gotta get my pullers. I think I'm gonna use a. I mean, I do actually have a bearing press over here. So, I mean, you or you're gonna need to have some kind of bearing press to get these bearings back on. But to get them off, you could probably use like a three-jaw puller. Or I, I'm gonna grab my. Um, I'll grab my. What do I have? A bunch of pullers in here. I'm gonna grab my. I might be able to get off. This is a power steering puller right here. So I might be able to use that. Um, or you could do like a maybe like a three jaw. Maybe that we that, that this is a like a for a uh, I forget the the not U joint, but it's for the car like the not the C V joint, I, I can't remember. It's it's for the steering joint. Yeah, I mean I got a bunch of different little things pulled everywhere, so I might try this one right here. I was gonna take this off of my, my press over there. I'd probably use something like this and press it out like that, but I don't know if I'd be able to clear the fan here. Yeah, so um, hopefully this will work on that side too. So, I think this is 5.8, so I'm going to crank it off there. Yeah, it's coming off pretty easy. Too bad I can't get it on camera. Um, yeah, just turn it and just pop right off. All right, so on the front bearing, I just need to pull off right there. So it just needs to go out this lip right here. And then it should come off. Except that it's a little marred right here. Eh, I can't tell. You know, having the right tools definitely makes everything life a lot easier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been actually pressing things on and off forever. 
I'm not a mechanic, I work at IT, but I've been working on my own stuff forever. Um, all right, might as well clean up some of the stairs I can't get to, get the rest of that dust off. All right, here are the Timken bearings. Let me those up. You know, it really is hit or miss with Timken bearings. Um, the quality, you don't really know they're going to be made. This one was a, this was a well bearing for my Bronco that I did a couple days ago. And this one was made in Japan where it's, um, you don't really know, it's kind of hit or miss. Some are made in China, some are made in the USA. So they kind of went offshore, I mean, probably 15 years ago maybe. So it really is hit or miss with these things. And I, I was looking around, I couldn't find uh, where they were made all over the box. So, I mean, if they're usually trying to hide where they were made, that's usually a sign that they were made in China. So if it was made in USA, it'd probably say made in USA all over it because they're trying to advertise it. So I don't know. But they were pretty cheap, though. So um, Another little tip here. Um, when you're going to be pressing these bearings on, don't press it from the outside race. Press it from the inside race because you can screw it up right here if you're pressing it from the outside. So make sure you get some kind of lip or coverage on this inside race. Right, so I have a socket here just because I want to make sure... 100% guarantee that I'm pushing from the inner race. Alright, looks like a good seat. Another way to check it too is, see right there? Alright, so on the front one, I'm just going to use this one. Well, first I have, a, I have an extra long socket. There's a lot of ways I could do that. I could put this on here and do it that way. It just, like I said, the main thing is the clamping it from the inner bearing race. So on this one, that should be able to hit the bearing inner race fine there. And there should be enough clearance to get it all the way on. So if I push it all the way down. Alright, I think I'm just gonna do that. Alright, let's try that. These are small bearings, so it's not difficult. Alright, you don't need to overdo it. That's it. All right, so before I put this back together, I'm going to put just a little bit of PB Blaster on them. That's going to help them so they don't bind up as much when I put them back in there. It's, it's a really tight clearance. Uh, plus, I live near the beach, so this might help prevent a little bit of rust. Yeah, because it would be a... Well, I mean, for me to take my whole mill apart just to replace these bearings would be super annoying, you know, after the fact. I, I put everything together, fire it up, and it's a noisy... Noisy grind. So, all right, let's get this uh, carefully. Put this in here like that. So I have to get the back plate in carefully. You know that. There's nothing supporting right now. Plus, I'm moving this one hand. So then I go back, push it into the back plate. Make sure the uh, this little this little spring washer here. What it does is it uh, puts pressure against the so it doesn't so it's not. It's almost like a I forget, it's like a side load bearing, but it pushes it so it's not going back and forth, walking back and forth in, in, in the uh, motor. Got the front camera going here. Well, I do want to tell you, or at least show you, that these things don't go to back. Always right. I mean, it's making a lot of noise. Even the bearings should be perfect. Well, whatever the noise is, that. Uh, Come up in the front here, and I know there's a fan up there, so I'm going to have to take this apart again. All right, nice and smooth. Yeah, the guy had the motor put back together, or backwards, so. Um, yeah, just, I guess double check that, man. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, all right, cool, nice and smooth, new bearings. Uh, hopefully it works. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work, but. Um, all right, so in future videos, you'll probably... Uh, See my mill here because I'm also going to be going. Uh, so right now, it's, it, those belts I can't stand changing those belts. Mm -hmm. So the whole reason for this motor is so I can I'm going to go one to one belts, and I can, can control the RPM speed uh, via a VFD that I'm going to have in my cabinet here. Um, if you're not, um, what's funny is my motor broke halfway while I was boring this thing here. My power steering gear I'm, that's a boring bar, boring head, and uh, my motor actually the shaft broke. <laughs> And the belt came apart, man. Um, halfway through the process, man. So that's super annoying. But 
All right, so that's how you uh, rebuild a three-phase motor, Baldor. All right.